The Hand's Temple is under siege by Ares and the followers of war. Will Frank Castle be able to hold out against them, or will he lose this second matchup as well? Well then, let's hop into the pages of Punisher issue number 8 and find out together, shall we? So then, as the issue opens up, we're treated once again to another one of Maria Castle's almost certainly doctored and definitely unreliable narrator flashbacks. For a change, though, she actually talks about a happy memory, a day when Frank piled all of them in the car and took them to the park. Yeah, Yes, that park, but this isn't that fateful day where they all end up shot. Maria says that Frank actually was making a real effort to try and connect to the rest of them and move beyond the horrors of war, but unfortunately it was short-lived and he ended up falling back into old patterns basically right after. In fact, we get to see Maria and Frank at couples counseling, which man, the Punisher in a therapist's office is just a really interesting image. Frank doesn't have much to add to the conversation about his behavior and his mental state though he does go out of his way to correct the therapist when she says that he's a soldier. Oh no no, I'm a marine, you see, there's a difference. Now back in the present, the Punisher is going about his merry business of punishing those he has found guilty. However, this ritualistic slaughter ends up getting interrupted by one of the hand ninjas telling Frank that Ares and his army have made their way into the forest outside Hand HQ and are headed for them. The Archpriestess isn't worried, saying that the forest is magical and no one can find their way to the temple unless they've already been here once before. Of course, we as the reader are well aware that Ares has kidnapped a bunch of hand ninjas and is using them as war dogs. The Archpriestess wants to send their forces to go meet Ares head on, while the Punisher feels differently instead, saying that they should wait and fight Ares here on the temple grounds where they'll have home field advantage. You know, it's classic Art of War stuff. The Archpriestess also very loudly questions the Punisher's leadership, not wanting to lose him considering that he almost died during his last battle with Ares, only for Frank to totally shut her down, saying that, hey, I'm the leader, I'm the high slayer, I'm the fighter here, and also, we haven't seen you in the battlefield once. In fact, just to prove how far Frank has come along in his training and mastering the demonic powers of the beast, Frank lets loose all of those criminals that he was executing and takes them all on single-handedly. It seems that we can now add healing and superhuman durability to Frank's ever-growing list of beast-related powers. Now, while all that is going on, we see Maria is actually up from her chambers and walking around the Hand Temple. She finds the Punisher body armor and a bunch of guns, and slowly but surely her memories all start coming back. This is of course very bad for the High Priestess who needs Maria to be as ignorant of everything as humanly possible so that she can continue to control Frank through her. Maria also isn't taking her medicine anymore, and for a second there she starts to wonder where her children have gone, and she almost has the word Punisher on her lips too before the High Priestess knocks her out. We also also get another flashback to a night wherein both Maria and Frank woke up with guns hearing noises outside. This is played off as a sweet moment of the two actually finding a moment of understanding between the two of them, and yet when the camera pulls back, we can see there's a bunch of hand ninjas outside their window. Which again is an interesting bit of artistic license because we know full well that these are doctored memories from an unreliable narrator, and I like the idea that the hand is literally hanging out around the periphery of these memories. Now as Frank gathers his men for war, he actually asks specifically for the hand ninjas who had their families murdered by the Archpriestess to stand by him as his honor guard. He swears to them that what happened to them is an unforgivable crime, and should they choose to stand by him today, he will do everything in his power as High Slayer to make sure that their killer is punished, and that their families are avenged, because today they're not just fighting for the beast, they're fighting for the Punisher. And you know what? They seem to be super into it, too. I like the idea that the hand hasn't just rubbed off on the Punisher, but the Punisher has rubbed off on the Hand Ninjas too, giving them something to believe in outside just the Beast. Now that's not all Frank does either. You'll remember that he had lost his last battle with Ares, and during that fight, the God of War had crushed his ceremonial dagger, the symbol of the Beast and the High Slayer. Well, to change up his strategy, the Punisher has taken the broken pieces of that dagger and forged them into bullets for a brand new Beast Gun. After all, Frank isn't the greatest swords master out there, but he certainly certainly can put a bullet between someone's eyes from far out. In fact, as the comic comes to a close, the Punisher meets Ares at the gates of the temple, saying that gods don't win wars, but bullets do. And so that was Punisher issue number eight, everybody, and once again, Jason Aaron manages to deliver one a hell of a fun Punisher story. Again, I wouldn't necessarily call any of this high art, but it's certainly trying way harder than the premise might lead you to believe that it is. In fact, this book only becomes more interesting and more engrossing when you realize that this is actually one 
one half of a two-sided coin, the other one being what Chip Zdarsky is doing with Daredevil right now, and that the Punisher and Daredevil are almost certainly headed for a major collision in the next little bit. I'm also really surprised how much I'm enjoying everything that's going on with Maria right now. She actually is becoming a fully activated character on her own. She's figuring stuff out. And once she realizes that she's been played and she's been part of the bigger plot to try and manipulate Frank, you have to wonder how she's going to act. Overall, I feel comfortable giving this one another very solid 8 out of 10. It's just a fun time reading comics, I tell ya. Hey there everyone, Kate Joel again, and I just want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. It means a lot to me. And hey, if you enjoyed the book I covered in this issue and want some comics of your own, might I recommend Book Depository? It's my number one place for shopping for comic book trades. You get a great price, and if you use my link down in the description, you'll actually be helping me out at the same time. You get something, I get something, everybody wins, right? So until next time, everyone, I've been Joel, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.